and we come back to our definitions of things we understand in nutrition because we have been fed a line of good nutrition that we're going to look at today whether you want to or not because I just love to drive a point home. I, I'm not a kind of like a kick them when they're down kind of guy, but, but I will beat a dead horse until I'm sure that you have nowhere to turn. We have empty calories and we have full calories, and we know intuitively what empty calories are. Anybody have a definition? That was a little tough all at once. It was either all or none there. Would, could, we, could, we work with, could we work with calories that have been separated from their constituent nutrients? Calories are nutrients, but they're found in food along with a whole bunch of other nutrients. In fact, they're found in food along with about 900,000 to a million. There's some controversy there. Somewhere around 900,000 to a million other nutrients besides those three that we call calories, protein, fat, and carbohydrate. And if you separate out the carbohydrates from the rest of the nutrients, you either end up with complex carbohydrates that are called starches if they're from plants, or they're called glycogen if they're from animals. They're one and the same thing. We either end up with complex carbohydrates called starches, or we end up with simple carbohydrates called sugars. Now, your body uses the sugars as fuel to fuel every cell of our body. All cells of the body fueled by sugar. Simple sugar, glucose. And we've been trained to understand that sugar in a bag represents empty calories. That refined white flour represents empty calories. And that if we take some sugar and we take some flour and we mix them together, we end up with junk food because it was empty calories all the way through. But in fact, we understand intuitively that if we add raisins to the flour and sugar, that we still have junk food. It's just not quite totally empty calories. It's raisins with empty calories added. So we have partially empty or partially full, depending on which way you see the glass. All the way up, we could fill those calories, fill those calories, fill those calories, all the way to the other end of food, which is called whole food. Ever hear of it? Don't go to the store of that name looking for it. You will not find very much of it there. But we understand the concept of whole food. In fact, just out of curiosity, how many people here bought into the concept that whole food is more nutritious than refined food before they heard about raw foods? Just curious. The rest of you, okay. The rest of you just didn't want to raise your hand. How many people today buy into the concept that whole food is more nutritious than its refined counterparts? Is there anybody who does not agree with the idea that whole food is more nutritious than its refined counterparts? Well, how do you like that? In a room of free-thinking individuals, we have a unanimous agreement, <clears throat> a collective agreement, that whole foods are more nutritious than their refined counterparts. That's magnificent. And you know, probably already, that when you cook food, when you heat food in any way, when you steam it, when you fry it, when you grill it, when you boil it, that nutrients are damaged, deranged, and destroyed. That water, unless you were boiling it in water, that water is boiled off, and there is no cooked food that fills the description of whole food. It is no longer whole. It doesn't really matter that we call it whole wheat bread. It's not whole. It doesn't matter that we call it fresh baked bread. It's not fresh. It was harvested last year or the year before. 
They put dates on when the beer was manufactured, but they don't put dates on when your cow died for your hamburger, and they don't put dates on when the grain was milled for your bread. Grain's claim to fame is that it's storable. Come on, it sat in silos for a few years before it ever got to the mill, before it ever got to the distributor, before it ever got to the wholesaler, before it ever got to the store, before it ever got to the shelf, before you ever brought it home and waited to be snowed in one year in order for you to make homemade, fresh bread. <laughs> 